Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, Kirsten's Corner. Today I am doing the mid-year book freakout tag. I am admittedly doing this tag far later than all of my friends here on booktube, but I checked it out and the middle day of the year is July 2nd, so I had FOMO and I was worried that I missed the train on this tag, but I didn't. I am very much so on time, so that made me feel far better about posting this video. <laughs> so this is the first tag that I've done in such a long time. I've kind of veered more toward just doing like book reviews because that's the content that I really enjoy making and that I enjoy watching. So that's just what I've been posting and I hope you guys like it too. I don't know. The views indicate you don't, but it's fine. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna push over because I read like exclusively eBooks. So we need some real estate for the book covers on here. I have my handy dandy Ruth Bader Ginsburg notepad on here, but screw the Supreme Court. So the first prompt is the best book that you've read this year. And I have had a phenomenal reading year. I have had a phenomenal reading year. I have kind of honed in on what I really enjoy reading. So I've read a lot of that. So because of that, I have five options for what the best book I've read this year is. So that's very exciting to me. So I'm just going to go in the order in which I read them. So the first one is American Kingpin by Nick Bilton. I have a dedicated review to this on my channel if you want to check it out. But this story basically follows Ross Ulbright, who was the creator of The Silk Road, which if you don't know, and you probably don't have any reason to know, is a black market website where you could buy literally anything you could desire that you can't buy anywhere else. So like hardcore drugs, bombs, guns, although you can sadly buy as many guns as you want in America. And it just follows his story and I genuinely thought this was going to be so boring but I distinctly remember reading it outside of my grandfather's eye doctor appointment and I loved it. So good. Highly recommend. Super exciting. Even if you're not interested in this stuff, because I'm not, it's really good. The second book that is a contender for best book of the year is Salt to the Sea by Ruta Zipetis. And this is a historical fiction book that follows a German passenger ship in World War II that was being used to transport people who were escaping the Red Army. And it tragically ends up sinking. However, the sinking of the ship is really only 5% of the book and being on the ship at all is really only like 10% of the book. It really is just these all different characters. There's like a German soldier, a Nazi, let's call it what it is, a young girl who's Polish, an older um, Russian gentleman, like there's just a lot of different characters and we just kind of follow them as they make their way to the boat and it is so good and so well written and I don't know why I haven't read more of this author yet but I read this book in like one day and that is insane for a historical fiction book and insane for me. I have such an affinity for boat sinkings. I I love them and I don't know why. I think they're so tragic and it's just heartbreaking. Um, but I really enjoy reading about them. So, so this is definitely a contender for best book of the year. The next book that I'm going to talk about is The Counselors by Jessica Goodman. Again, I have an entire book review up for this book on my channel. However, this book follows the story of our main character, Goldie, and she is a senior counselor at an elite, elite summer camp. And it, she and her two best friends, Imbojin and Ava, are lifeguards this summer. They've been going there since they were super young. But our main character, Goldie, is like a scholarship kid, which is honestly such a trend with like boarding school books or like college books or like prestigious camp books like it always happens that the character we're following is like a scholarship kid and like not rich and yeah we love that viewpoint we love it obviously I love this book but I just want to see a viewpoint from a filthy rich girl and honestly I'm reading a book right now that we're getting that so that's kind of fulfilling if you're interested it's off balance I'll put it here um it's smutty though so maybe don't read it if you're not interested in that but yeah, this book was so good, honestly, just because of the summer camp vibes. Absolutely love them. Highly recommend. Definitely check this one out. Some shady stuff goes down. 
someone dies. It's a lot. It's messy, but it's so good. The fourth contender that I have for best book I actually own physically, although I read it on ebook, and that is Zodiac Academy. And technically, I'm going to put like the whole series here, although book one was one of my favorites. But books one, two, and four, uh, I think are the best so far. I didn't really like three. But yeah, I read this one on ebook, but I couldn't buy the rest of the series physically and not have the first book. That would just be weird. But this book is a fantasy romance series, or not this book, the series is a fantasy romance series. And we follow our two main characters, Darcy and Tori, and they are twin sisters. And they're from the mortal realm, but then they get transported to the fey realm, uh, which is like Solaria. And I know it's not called like the mortal realm in the other realm, but I have that in my head from Sabrina the Teenage Witch and I can't get it out. So that's what I'm going to call it. Um, but I absolutely love these books. It is a bully romance at a boarding school where we have like four like heirs to the throne and then the two rightful heirs to the throne. And so much stuff goes down and I absolutely love it. I'm on book five now and I think objectively they're not like good writing. And objectively maybe they're not the best fantasy romance but this is the first fantasy romance that i have ever read in my life so i love it but do with that what you will you want to get back out ruthie over here oh and then the last book that is a contender for my best book of the year is the confidence of wildflowers by Macalia smelzer and again, I have a dedicated book review for this book up on my channel if you want to check it out. I also have a dedicated book review for Zodiac Academy if you want to see that. As you can see, I've been big into the book reviews. But yeah, The Confidence of Wildflowers is an age gap romance from KU where we follow our main character, Salem. And she has just graduated high school, but all of her friends are going off to college while she is staying back working at her mom's antique shop and making her own homemade candles that are a bit of a viral hit. Um, they're selling very well and she also ends up taking a side job of nannying for her next door neighbor Thayer's young child named Forrest. And as you can predict since it's an age gap romance Salem and Thayer start falling for each other and there are a ton of triggers in this book. It is so dramatic and traumatic honestly but I absolutely loved it. If you have absolutely any triggers check out if they're in this book because they probably are but it's so good and i thought it was handled so well it really got me on the age gap train for some reason i just love that stuff but yeah i definitely love this book and it's definitely a contender for the best book of the year okay so the next prompt is the best sequel i've read this year and i am like big into series i know some people struggle with this because they don't read a lot of sequels or series but when i start a series i tend to just go deep i really enjoy that um so i have two options for this the first one i've kind of already talked actually i've kind of already talked about both of them <laughs> my first option for the best sequel is ruthless fey by caroline packham and suzanne valenti this is book two in the zodiac academy i was gonna pick book four but i think i liked book two better this is again just a continuation of the zodiac Academy series I did annotate this one I started my love of annotating with this book I won't tell you too much about this um, but we literally pick up right where book one ends off and it's just a wildly good time I also have really good memories of this book because I read it when I got COVID I had COVID the very last week of second semester and I laid in bed and I read this book and I just didn't want to put it down and I, I I don't really get that sensation a lot like I was just so interested if I had even two free minutes I was reading it like in between class if I had like a 15 minute break because I went on zoom I didn't go to school with COVID don't worry I'm not a monster but I would read it and I just absolutely I loved it it was so good I loved the characters and like I said I'm on book five and I'm still loving it so much actually talking about them now makes me just go read it I do again have a dedicated review to this book up on my channel if you want to see it I'm kind of like a broken record at this point I'll have all of my reviews linked down below check it out if you feel the need the next sequel that I'm going to talk about is the resurrection of wildflowers which is the sequel to The Confidence of Wildflowers by Macaulay Smeltzer. This book, I again, obviously can't tell you much about. 
because it is a sequel and telling you absolutely anything about this book would completely ruin the first book for you. What I can tell you is this book picks up six years after the first book ended. So if you finished the first book and you were like, I can't take more of this, it's not. Um, this book is not at all like the first book. I saw a review on Goodreads and it said this book isn't a good book, but it is a feel good book. And it is, and that is absolutely what you need after you finish The Confidence of Wildflowers. So I absolutely loved it. I thought it was a great sequel. I thought it was a very smart sequel. I think if the author had picked up where the first book ended, I wouldn't have been able to handle it. I don't think I would have read it, honestly, but I just saw in someone else's review that it um, was a time jump. So I, I knew I could handle it. Uh, but yeah, I really like the sequel. I think it is a very, very good sequel. The next question is what is a new release that you haven't gotten to yet? And there are definitely a lot of these. However, I haven't been keeping up with new releases as much. I've just kind of been vibing and reading what I want. I see a book and I say I want to read it and I don't really pay attention to whether it's new or not. I do have two books that I picked up at Costco this past weekend uh, with my friend. We were away at her lake house and there was a Costco right there. so couldn't pass it up but the first one is The Island by Adrian McKinty and this book was like so cheap it was literally like half of what it would normally be according to the dust jacket so that's wild but this story follows I believe a family who kind of gets abandoned on an island in Australia and they kind of have to live off the land I'm not sure I've just heard that the vibes are amazing and I genuinely read books like for the vibes like I'm here for the vibes so I'm interested to get to this one. I did start reading it like on the boat that we were on while we were down there, but it wasn't wasn't the feel we were going for. But I know this one recently came out and I definitely have to get to it. The next I also bought at Costco and that is Hotel Nantucket by Ellen Hildebrand. If you don't know, I live in Massachusetts. Nantucket is off the coast of Massachusetts. Um, so I am very interested to get to this one. I think we follow our main character Lisbeth, interesting, and she takes over this Hotel Nantucket on, on Nantucket. How many times can I say Nantucket in this video? It sounds so pretentious. But I love cute little stories like this. Like I read um, uh, Meet Me at the Cupcake Cafe and then Christmas at the Cupcake Cafe by Jennifer Colgan. And they're just completely character driven day to day life books, but I absolutely love them. And I think this is the vibe that this book is giving and I'm excited to get to it. I'm interested, so we shall see. And then the next book that I really want to get to um, that I believe is a recent release is Notes on Your Sudden Disappearance. And this sounds so interesting. I believe it is a YA thriller about a girl who goes missing. And I love people who go missing. Well, I like, I love reading about people who go missing. I think it's so interesting, even though I'm terrified of getting kidnapped. But yeah, I am just excited to get this one because of the little bit that I know about the premise of the story. Um, I haven't seen anyone read it though. I only found it from a Goodreads giveaway, so I'm intrigued. All right, the next question is anticipated releases from the last half or the second half, there's only two halves of the year. Um, I'm just going to go through these kind of rapid fire. First one is the last book in the Zodiac Academy series. It's coming out in December. I do still have two and a half more books from this series to read before I can even get to that one, but I will certainly be caught up by the time it gets released. I'm also excited for the new Truly Devious book called Nine Lives. I'm completely caught up in this series and I'll be reading this book the minute it comes out. The same can be said for the new Inheritance Games book called The Final Gambit. I am, again, caught up on that series and I will be reading that as soon as that one comes out. Uh, we also have Well Traveled coming out, which is the fourth book in the Willow Creek romance series, which I adore. It's a renaissance romance book series and I will be reading that as soon as it comes out. Um, I'm also excited for Taylor Jenkins Reid, Taylor Jenkins Reid's new book, um, Carrie Soto is Back. I absolutely love TJR's writing. And then I'm excited for Ruth Ware's new book, It Girl, because I love Ruth Ware. I know some people like, don't like her, but I think she's phenomenal. So do with that what you will. 
All right, the next question is biggest disappointment. And I have two answers that both really, really let me down. So the first one is a huge disappointment because I absolutely love the other two books in this series, and that is As Good as Dead by Holly Jackson. This is the third book in the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series, and this book just took a completely different avenue than the first two books. And also it's not multimedia. All the other books are multimedia, but this one isn't, and that was a huge disappointment because the multimedia was a huge draw for the first two books for me and can't say much because i don't want to spoil it but pip and the storyline are just completely different in this book and i hated it i actually had to get the audiobook to even get through this one i started this book on release day which was at this point probably 2021 uh yeah so i started this on release day and i didn't finish it until recently this year so I just didn't like it. I really think you can skip this book and honestly you should probably skip this book. My second biggest disappointment and probably my least favorite book of the year um, will definitely be on every list that I have regarding bad books ever and that is Reminders of Him by Colleen Hoover. I have this book in an entirely dedicated video. It's a long book review just for this book talking through every single issue that I had with it. There are so many issues that I don't think people are addressing. And before you come at me, please go watch that video. I have very, very, very special viewpoints for that book. I talk about it more in that video, but I am a law student, so I have a very firm grasp on the legal system, more than the people who are coming at me in the comments. I have also a sister who is in jail for something like what happened in the book so i have that vantage point and she has a young daughter just like the person in the book so i have a very 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 unique vantage point and i remember i was on a live show for this book for some reading uh discussion and some girl was in the comments just coming at me and attacking me and i was like honey you don't know me you know nothing just get off it you are embarrassing yourself Again, I have so many problems with this book, but I just really didn't like it at all. And that's why it'll be my biggest disappointment for sure. The next question is the biggest surprise of the year. So the first one I'm going to talk about is The Bodyguard by Catherine Center. This book was a huge surprise for me because uh, I read it as a net galley arc. And I read Catherine Center's Happiness for Beginners and absolutely loved it because it was like it was a contemporary romance but it was not a very traditional contemporary romance and when i started reading this book i thought it was just going to be a cutesy boring contemporary romance however i was so wrong and i'm so happy i'm wrong i will have a release day book review up for this book on my channel so be on the lookout for that but we follow our main character and she's a bodyguard and she ends up being a bodyguard for a super famous movie star and has to pretend that they're dating um, so that his parents don't know that he has like a bodyguard and it was super cute and wholesome and tender and loving and just sensitive and great. I definitely loved it. And then the next book that was a surprise for me was Culty by Mariana Zapata. This was a surprise because these books are long. Mariana Zapata's books are long. They are chonkers and they are slow burn. Like kissing doesn't happen until like 90% or more into the book. And I didn't know if I would love that, but I wanted to give it a shot because people love Mariana Zapata so much and I ended up loving it. So that was a fantastic surprise for me and I will definitely be jumping into more of her books in the last half of the year. That leads me into my next question, which is your new favorite author. And for me, <laughs> I mean, I gotta say Mariana Zapata. I think that her writing was phenomenal. I can't say much more because I just talked about the only book that I read by her. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited. The next question is your newest fictional crush. And I can't really name like a particular like crush. Um, one character that I absolutely loved was Caleb from The Confidence of Wildflowers. And Caleb is our main character Salem's boyfriend, like at the beginning of the book. And he is just the most understanding, sensitive, nice, respectful, caring guy and i loved it i absolutely loved it there was no drama with him he was just so he was a good human being so i absolutely loved that 
The next question is a book that has made you cry and I haven't cried once this year at a book. Uh, in my 22 years of living, I've only cried once at a book. So yeah, I don't see that happening for the next decade. The next question is a book that made you happy. And I'm just going to talk about one book here because all of the other books that I would say uh, I have already talked about and I don't want to be redundant. But that is Sometime in Summer by Katrina Leno. I have a book review dedicated to this book on my channel if you want to check it out. Um, but this was just such a wholesome read. It is a young, young adult magical realism where we follow our main character, Anna, who comes to Massachusetts to help clean out her great aunt's cottage for the summer. And it is so sweet and very much so in the same light of Summer of Salt. So I loved it and I hope more people read it because I haven't seen anyone else read it. The next question is your favorite book to movie adaptation. And I've only read, watched, sorry, three of these this year. I have watched Perks of Being a Wallflower, I have watched After by Anna Todd, and I have watched I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reed. And I'm Thinking of Ending Things stunk, like so bad. Oh, I also watched No Exit. No Exit was pretty good actually. But I'm Thinking of Ending Things stunk, After stunk, um, and Perks of Being a Wallflower was pretty good. Plus it had Paul Rudd in it, so. Uh, I'm gonna say Perks of Being a Wallflower. The next question is the most beautiful book that you've acquired this year. Um, I read mostly ebooks, so I haven't acquired many books this year. However, I did purchase off eBay this Treasury of Bedtime Stories. I had it when I was young, like when I was little. Um, my grandparents bought it for me and I used to read it to like my pretend classroom all the time when I was younger and it got thrown away I believe and I had been eyeing it online for so long and I finally found it in literally perfect condition and I just love it and it has gold pages so I think it's beautiful so this is definitely the most beautiful book that I've acquired this year and finally the last prompt is books you need to get I am bleeding Books I need to get to this year and like everyone I'm gonna be like there's so many books but um there are so many books um I really really want to read Cherish Vara I saw this on Jesse from Books and Bowties or Bowties and Books sorry um and it looks so good they were talking about it I don't think they've read it themselves yet no I don't think so but it looks really good I also really want to from, get to from Luke Up With Love by Marin Zapata, the rest of the Zodiac Academy books, all those books that I talked about anticipating. Yeah, there's just a lot, but those are ones in particular that I want to read lickety split. All right, so that is it for this video. It's too long. It shouldn't be this long for a tag, but I talked about too many books. Lesson learned. If you made it this far in the video, how about you put the calendar emoji since we are like halfway through the calendar um thank you so much for watching this video for continuing to support my channel don't forget to follow me on instagram twitter and goodreads so that you can keep up with me all the time and until next time happy reading bye